Oh, hey guys. Hi, it's uh, Krusty Old Crow back again. Do another tactical perspective, but I'm just I'm wearing the wrong shirt right now. You see, it's been a Cobra Christmas for this guy. So today, we're going on more and more Cobra. So I gotta wear the right shirt, right? Even though I got all me. Yeah, Joe socks. <laughs> no way to show off your Christmas party. How you guys doing? Press the Okra back again to a tactical perspective. I'm going to do this one on the Alley Vipers. Uh, it's an older figure. It's been in the series for quite a while. And uh, I was really slow to get it, but you guys know me. I was really excited to get it because, you know, I had a fascination with this figure. Or if you've watched any of my videos, anytime this figure come up, I'm the guy going, oh, I wish I had one of those. Couldn't find it in Canada on any retail shelf or any, like, discount clearance. We don't have a Ross. We don't have an Ollie's. We don't have uh, Targets. What not. We got Toys R Us, which, hey, do you guys here in Canada, you know that they just went up $5 uh, to, and G.I. Joe Classified right now? Do you guys know that? They did. Yeah, that flat line is now like $39.99 rather than $35.99 uh, in around there, right? So uh, that was a bummer. But yeah, we're going to be doing the Alley Viper. I was very excited to get this figure. I ordered it online. Uh, as I found a good website that had an actually good deal on it. So I didn't just get one, I got two of them uh, because the sale was that good on it. And there's that side art. Uh, and then it's your standard old coffin pack. And this was a very kit loaded trooper. And uh, I don't know what the original um, big box store price was on this thing over there. This was an average uh, over the over the retail shelf kind of price in Canada that that would have been equivalent to GameStop charging like thirty eight to thirty five dollars for it, uh, or if this countered it almost as a dull, like a bit more at the time. This thing came fully loaded out, guys. So yeah, uh, this tactical perspective we're carrying on with our Cobra theme, and we're gonna have a look at this Alley Viper that uh, I've been cheering and hoping for for quite some time, and I managed to finally secure, like I said, two of them. It's just uh, not gonna crowd the shot too much with, oh my God, too many of them. We're just gonna, oh my Jesus, this camera. Pardon me, folks, I'll just do this a bit differently right now until I get the camera figured out. <laughs> uh, so there he is, the Cobra Viper, and he was number, <clears throat> pardon me, what was it? 34 in the series, like I said, back when they had only the island on the box. and. Really not much more going for it. So no Easter eggs to go over, nothing big. But uh, a lot of people weren't impressed with this figure, and I get it. Uh, it's it, it, it was a risk taker back in the day, but I was one of its big fans uh, because it was one of the last Joe figures I remember either having or my cousin had that I was impressed by. Well, how, how do you like my handprint? What's, uh, what's my lifeline looking like, dudes? Uh, yeah. I had it, and I'm just going to call up the old file card for it, as I often do, which I didn't do on the last review I did because uh, I was so excited to do those Cobras, I just couldn't get around to it. Uh, getting the file cards all started out, plus there's three of them. But with the Alley Viper, you know, we like to look at those Joe file cards when we do this. So the Alley Vipers are Cobra equivalent of a police SWAT units or British Special Air Service, the SAS. They form a spirit of Cobra's inner city invasion force. This elite uh, contingent of marauders are true masters of brutality, possessing a style of ruthlessness not present in other Cobra soldiers. Recruited from Cobra's most diabolical uh, combat divisions. Is that diabolical? Yeah, diabolical combat divisions. Alley Vipers use ver various forms of treachery to achieve their objective. In order to graduate from their training program, they are required to survive a full burst of machine gun fire across their frontal body armor, execute a 30-foot jump onto concrete with it with full combat load, and run down a 100-meter gas-filled corridor without a gas mask. Then goes on to say alley vipers are big and strong, as well as ruthless. Their body armor alone weighs 50 pounds, and they carry at least 30 pounds of weapons, ammos, grenades, and climbing gear. You definitely won't, don't want one of these gorillas uh, running up and kicking down your door, right? Uh, basically, yeah. Okay, so these guys are the brutes of the battlefield, as it says on there. Uh, and that figure was very different at the time, and it was hard for me to wrap my mind around these neon colors uh, being so appealing. And it was that different kind of urban cam 
uh, I hadn't seen before in the 80s, early 90s, right? Uh, I wasn't familiar with it. Uh, and I'd never seen anything like it. I didn't like the bold color choices that came later in the line with other characters, but this appealed to me a lot. And so did the shield and the flip down visor and the, the amount of gear, right? Uh, the file card alone just showed him like just this guy was a, this guy was a walking nightmare of firepower and defense, heavy armor and a shield and all these guns and the ability to climb up this guy, in my mind was a siege engine, a living juggernaut uh, kind of guy, a lot like what you see me focusing on on my uh, conversions. So I'm just going to pull the table closer between us and we're going to have a uh, standard head to toe and I'll uh, quickly go over a play grade and all that other good stuff for it. And attack rate as I often do. Let's see if we guys get two shots right now. No, he didn't fall. No two shots for you guys. Uh, you're going to have to stay sober for this one. I know the last few probably had you feeling tipsy. You know the rule, two shots when they fall. All right, we'll take the crow out of there. So the Alley Viper, as I said, we've gone over that file card. And now I'll just do my standard head-to-toe inspection while you just drink in something all of you probably have and have taken for granted. But what is it about us that makes it so compelling for me? I look at these as their intended occupation forces role. And I think about numerous numbers of these guys marching down the streets and, you know, uh, being military. And in today's modern world, a lot of us are very familiar with the riot control scenario. And I've talked about that uh, a couple of times, you know, uh, especially when I talked about uh, Shockwave and his shield. And when I was building Bull, uh, Bull, pardon me, my heavy breaching conversion on my 40K, which I'll talk about again very soon, uh, this guy just kept becoming more and more appealing over time. Like, just, I really thought this was one of the very coolest looking Cobras I had ever seen. And uh, I wanted this in my classified. So I, you guys saw... In most of my videos, how disappointed I had been to find a lack of availability here in Ottawa for it. Um, even on Facebook um, sale fa um, marketplace, I only saw one, but it was like so far away I didn't bother. And I don't buy a lot of stuff from there, but I did get my breaker and coil from there. Uh, that's been all I've been able to buy. <laughs> Everything else has been too far away. So I knew I was going to have to mail order it, but I wasn't able to find much for mail ordering. A lot of places were sold out of it or didn't carry it anymore. And then I found, uh, I think the, the site is called Ages 3 and Up. Uh, I hope that's what they were called, but they had to like 25% off or 35% off on these. So I managed to snag two and call that my Christmas present to myself. Uh, imagine my surprise when I... Uh, found that as happy as I was buying these, I had th even more great Cobra, Cobra badness coming my way. And uh, you saw that in the previous video, what that looked like. So let's do the head to toe here. First off, just like in the old 80s version, he's got that flip down mask, which was always appealing. So you could have that human looking side to him where he, you know, he's got his face. You could make that connection to the eyes. You could look at him, things like that. Put a Put a person in there and then you can shut that person off to the world and deal with this myoptic lens scope um, monocle thing on his forehead or on his vis visor here. Uh, how he sees the world and sees you, the uh, the civilians or whoever he's dealing with as he's uh, laying siege to your city in droves. Uh, I always liked that helmet and it didn't have any problems with the articulation because it's a low cropped uh, back helmet so he can look up with good articulation and look down with no issues like look down at children and look up for helicopters and and rooftop snipers and all that other stuff and uh so overall the head was very well done i thought for this figure and oh I was happy with that. I'm going to leave that up now. I like the fact that it's a very easy to detach piece, but it is a very thin piece of plastic. And those posts are just so tiny. I worry, you know, maybe one day he takes the wrong tumble. 
Good thing I bought two. But if he takes the wrong tumble, uh, that's the crow's fault. I don't think that's necessarily a quality control issue. You have to have a degree of responsibility with things that are, have thin pieces, and you buy them knowingly. You know this, crow. Uh, so moving down, we're just going to open up his... Uh, Open up his torso to show you this big honking load-bearing vest he's got on here. And you can see, you know, the side fasteners for it. But it's a very thick, thick secondary piece over that torso. So we know that we're going to have uh, pretty much a huge limitation already with that center line bend uh, that the Joe figures have in the just above the di around the diaphragm area under the rib cage. You have that fold point that allows your Joes to do tucks and great poses, and you're not going to access that with the uh, Alley Viper. And I don't know about the Crimson Alley Viper. I, I I haven't looked at one recently in photos. I haven't picked one up yet, but I wonder if that uh, vest is very much different on theirs or if they just carried it over the same way. But there you go. The thicker the vest, the more problems you have. Now, you'll notice as we work down, it even incorporates a cod piece armor uh, to protect protect that baby factory and, uh, you know, from radiation and, and beanbag shots to the groin. He's got that on there. That's going to limit it even more for that forward bend, okay? And that forward bend really doesn't exist without a lot of compensating with the, the legs for the pose. So you can't really see him bending down to pick up a quarter or anything like that. He's going to be kneeling at best for a lot of it. And yeah, he can kneel, uh, I think, I more or less. But pardon me if you hear my family in the background, but uh, that's just the way it is when you tell them that you're videotaping and they forget. Uh, so uh, you got the... <laughs> Uh, you got that big vest, and it does appear to have a lot of uh, pouches on it, which you know me. I'm a big advocate for ammo pouches. But again, we run into that. Does it make sense with the weapons he's carrying? Not really, as these are much larger magazines on these weapons that he does have on them. Uh, it's your standard Viper weapon assortment, really, for the for the two guns, at least. Uh, and... I think that's actually the one they threw in the snake eye. So maybe this is the snake eye's weapons loaded. I think it is because it's got the grappling hook gun as well, which we show in the back. And I'm not trying to jump forward to accessories. I'm just, yeah, it was the mag pouch issue again. But again, a lot of heavy padding and armor and a lot of body armor. So I can accept a lot of this as being, you know, maybe extra plating or, or gizmos gadgets and whatnot. Where this becomes a problem for me is that if you have a guy that armored, there's no extra thigh plating up there. Uh, and no, that's not me advocating for myself. It's just somewhere there should be some blast protection. I feel like the, the legs were a little underwhelming for what the torso was bringing uh, and the shield, right? So it's like the legs are very exposed. So now he des definitely needs that effing shield, right? Because he's got to hold it low. But he does have the standard Viper, to, uh, Cobra, Viper, whatever, night knee pads. And uh, the shin protectors I'm fond of there are armor plated, but it is a standard military boot on there. On the arms is where they start to lose me with one particular feature. And I've probably got it in upside down, but I think, I don't know. The way the openings are on these sleeve gauntlets for the knife sheath, I'm just going to move them towards you a bit. I'm not a fan of it even being on that wrist. Uh, I'm probably going to take mine off and leave them somewhere more appealing. There goes the rifle. That is not a shot. That is a sip of beer. Anyways, uh, I'm probably going to take those and move those off. They're very, I don't know. It doesn't make sense why you would have anything that close to your hand. And it doesn't make sense that if you're holding a shield and you're firing a rifle, you got this big honking a uh, knife just sitting there. I know you want to have quick access. Oh, cha! But it's just, it's nonsense. And the fact that he's got two of them is, I, I, I feel like that's a waste as well. I imagine that they've got them done in a way. Like, I think the loops on uh, the handles, if I'm remembering. Yeah, there's little loops on the handles. And I think that's supposed to be a notch system for wire cutting scissors. Uh, possibly. Not really, sure, not really caring. I mean, if I look at it that way, it works for the siege trooper for breaking chain fences as they're going into a compound or something, uh, having these scissor effect bayonets that can clip together. But their placement is just nonsense to me on the wrist. I don't care about it up here so much. Is that even, yeah, 
Like that we've we've accepted that they like this up here for a lot of Joe vests, so Cobra vests be no different. Um, but maybe this is the one time where I'm looking at possibly a siege trooper that should have the standard Viper two grenades sitting up on his breast. Uh, but they would be smoke or tear gas or something like that, right? But yeah, not a big fan of that being there. Uh, the Cobra Bassard on this side, I thought that was a nice little uh, feature, and it is reflective of what was originally on the character. If you look at the, if you look at the character's arm, he's got that uh, that blue stripe there. So I like that they've uh, pronounced that, and uh, it carries over to what we were seeing with the the Cobra soldiers um, having it on their arms, right? Uh, those brassards and I do like that anything that like, lends to a rank structure and at stats uh, formations all that kind of stuff definitely great for troop building and that's where Cobra kind of really kind of hit it out of the park I think was throwing in just something as cheap as a brassard to lend these things to it even Python Patrol has them uh, so moving down those legs you see he's got a good side holster on the hip there or the thigh Standard Viper S, uh, you know, super pistol with the laser sight, whatever. It's uh, it's nothing different. Uh, we've seen it repeated. This is an older figure in the line, so I'm fine with that. Uh, and then he's got, what is this pouch on there? Let's have a look. Just those extra mags, I think those are. They could be breaching charges or door breaching. Or that could be the extra thigh or armor protection. But I think those might be just little shape charges or possibly fancy mag loading system on the other leg. Uh, either way, I don't think it's overly necessarily, but it doesn't really seem to... It seems to be a snug enough fit. It's not deterring me from keeping it. It's not compelling me to keep it. I don't care about it. That's about it. Uh, I do like the rings, the D-rings they put out the, uh, the little... Uh, right here these little d-rings that they have on the bottom of the vest and they've got them colored i like that that's uh that's good for repelling and for uh you know coming off the chopper coming down the line uh, on a building siege you clip in you go down i like that they threw that in there you know like i said it's no secret hasbro does have some uh what is it u.s naval reserve guys or something like that that they are working consultation with god I wish they would go international uh, and talk to this guy because that would be the dream job for a guy uh, like myself. Anyways, that backpack, uh, it, you've got the uh, grappling hook rifle, which we get in a few different varieties now. Uh, different characters have them. Snake Eyes with Timber had it uh, off the top of my head for one for sure. But uh, with it, we've got a backpack where that spool of line now makes sense right so you can picture that he fires the grappling hook and i am gonna have to do a wire conversion on this and i've as i've done it it's put away right now i did a smaller one for just the rifle itself but you can see how that little loop and the loop with the grappling hook it would feed into that spool and he would fire and that would be his uh his climbing line apparatus so i really think that's cool you know it puts them in there in the same conversation uh, for climbing as alpine or wolf spider or others um yeah i thought the backpack was an interesting feature it's actually a pretty thin backpack which is good because this character with that much weight to the upper torso i was concerned there'd be fitting issues with long post thick backpacks uh but with the thin backpack even with that thick second layer because you can't bend it around a lot that post is nicely lined up and uh yeah, that uh, grappling hook fits in very snug with the weapon, and then the weapon fits in very snug onto the backpack. So I was pretty content with that. The shield itself was an impressive feature for me, and right away, it upset me uh, more about the issue I have with the shockwave. At some point, I want a second shockwave because I do not like which side that shield is dedicated to. Uh, with the cut and the shit with the weapons what I view as a weapons firing slot grooved into the opposite side I feel it should be for the other hand and if you look that is a very hard mounted arm bracket holding the shield onto the arm you can't pivot it the way you can with this and I and I just don't understand why did they why did they have to step away from that because that would have made the whole problem go away for me if I could just switch it to the other arm as I can here with our alley viper. Uh, so I was happy about the ability for posing 
and all the other great things that come with the shield like that you know it's a combat weapon it's a defensive weapon it's a it's a slam tool it's a bullet stopper and it's a digital readout on the uh the facing which man it's nothing fancy not they, they've done better with the graphics in this line as they went down but for a starter i thought it was kind of a neat nod kind of cool uh i will put a lot of focus of it i don't plan to have my shields uh hanging out like that but uh you know um maybe a bit of depth into this would have been a neater thing but again it's very much in line with the original i almost wish some of that purple had bled out onto the cobra there what do you think cat because i'm asking your goddamn opinion yes hello i missed you too buddy i did but i'm shooting a video yeah we'll talk about the other cats okay later but uh sorry about that cats were away from me for a week or so too so they're gonna want to get involved but overall, guys, uh, very pleased with finally closing the loop on picking up the Alley Viper number 34 in the series. One of the ones I've been really anticipating are uh, like high, high, high desire to get a lot of problems getting it. And uh, once I ordered it, it was one of the reasons I wanted to hurry up and get back home and go to the mail and get this box. But it wasn't the feature of coming home. The whole Cobra build just suddenly happened as soon as I came home between ordering these figures and uh, the kindness of the Toy Enhancer and what he brought to the table. So quickly guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna move the camera over. I'm gonna show you something that I'm, I'm brainstorming right now. I'm gonna talk to you about a couple of conversions that are going on that we're gonna be doing later uh, that I'm gonna do for the channel for fun. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. But I really quickly got to give this thing a play grade and attack grade. Well, guys, for the play grade, overall, uh, you, you get a B plus on the play grade because that, that heavy armor comes with a trade-off and that sometimes balance and posability issues and things like that. So it jumps it down to a B, but it's a plus because you get a lot with this figure to play with. This, this placement of this sheath also costs it a little bit in playability because it just... It's asking for problems and bends in the knife or inability to do certain things with the arms. I just feel like it's going to be an issue. I'm going to do something about it at some point or I'm just going to leave these in one pose for quite a while before I get to it. But the overall playability B+, plus, I think it's a great figure. I'm glad I got, uh, I got two of them. I should just at least say, you know, we got two of them there. Uh, so definitely a B plus on the playability and on the tactical I got to go with an A minus. Uh, the A being because you might say, well, how does he give an A to a camouflage pattern like that? In an occupation, in a siege, it's not about hiding. It's about being very visible. And this is like deer hunter visible. Like you might think you can shoot at gorillas and all this other stuff. But when you see us, you better put that weapon on safe, lower it and put your hands up kind of that kind of visibility. And that's what they achieve so well with this bright orange and uh blue combination and they, it had me hook line and sinker when it came out back in the 80s so i thought it was a brilliant color pattern and it was almost like that was the line and everything else they tried after that with those bright colors went beyond that line and i know more than a few people probably agree with that and more than a, more than a few probably go no no i loved it all i loved even right up to 90 whatever or 89 you know what i i get differing views but this one was one that i didn't think i would like and then i loved it even back then uh and i i couldn't put it together but now as an adult with a military career understanding this guy's role a little bit better yeah i get it these are the guys that you put on the block that keep control of the city populace and you you have them out there visible and you have them mutually supported in, in droves. Uh, I'm only keeping two on my army because that's all I think is needed when, you know, when it comes to my troop builds, which are very small usually, but got really big this year. So on the top grade, A minus, again, that knife being in the wrong spot kind of bothers me. A little bit of lack of armor on the, on the lower legs area kind of bothers me. I mean, you thought to put the cod piece on, but the major femoral artery uh, also needs protection uh, or some sort of deflection plate or at least a buildup of, of uh, material if you're making this kind of a siege guy who's going to 
whose whole role is to draw in fire, right? So I'm gonna move them down and I'm gonna talk to you guys a little bit about the where we stand with Bull and where something else is going. Basically, as I didn't have much to review over Christmas because I didn't pick up much besides uh, something I picked up for him and uh, that was about it until I got back. I went out today and I did pick up a couple things. Uh, this morning at GameStop because I, well, just one thing, because I was very happy about working on some ideas for my conversions. So what you're gonna see over the channel over the next little while is basically a prioritization of issues, but one of them got interrupted today. So you're gonna see some concurrent things. Right now, we have Bull. Uh, Bull is coming along nicely. I am going to go back to painting and finishing Bull tomorrow. What you see beside him is another Dark Tide artist proof, and that is the Chaos version of the, of the Imperial Guard. Uh, and that, my friends, that thorny beast even pricked me as I was getting it out of the pack. Uh, but that is going to be uh, the next the next conversion that I'm going to work on. Uh, and that one, I am going to go for a Crimson Guard Immortal. I said I wanted to do it originally. Now I'm going to do it, but it's going to be my variation on a Crimson Guard Immortal. Uh, yeah, like a variant. Uh, but you can see there's a lot to work with here. You'll probably see stuff clipped. Yeah, uh, things added, whatnot. That face is probably gonna get a mask that removes, but I might just keep that face because my God, did they ever do a cool job with that. Uh, so that's on the list. What else is on the list? Yes, yeah, kitty cats. So I'm gonna paint my cats. No, uh, not as big a deal. Uh, these weapons that they're coming with, I've decided might as well either put them away or do something with them. So I might try and do some conversions to turn these into some sci-fi, Cobra Mars pattern, whatever, heavy weapons, just for shits and giggles. But yeah, we're going to the hovercraft. This is the problem with the hovercraft, guys. Uh, it was in the garage and a mouse got at it right here. So I've got a lot of hull repair to do here, which is no big deal. I can, I can handle that, that's not a big deal. But I've got to recite a few things and I've decided that uh, with the cabin, I'm going to keep this one and I'm going to rework that crew compartment because I want to be able to get at things from the roof and I can't do that from here. And I want it to have some side hatches. So we're going to rework this whole thing uh, from scratch. I'm going to build up this with a lot of brass sheeting, the, the fan system, brass sheeting and a, and a few more plastic hard pieces of get that kind of looking a little cleaner things like that and that'll get the hovercraft on the go the other hovercraft like i said i'm just going to do it as a basic uh water moccasin tribute piece it's not at all a water moccasin i realize that but i mean what do you want from me i start building things with adhd i've got to finish them uh so those are two big projects i have on the go i'm also going to be trying to do a few more com uh, figure conversions i've got some things lined up here i want to try but one got prioritized today and i want to talk about it uh, just after I show you, this is going to become, if I if I get through the year, by the end of the year, hopefully this is going to become a uh, Mars office uh, battle thing for the, a Cobra display because the Viper Island one I did is forever stuck in the garage. I ain't bringing that in. It's, uh, it's pretty heavy and it's not worth it if I'm moving, but I got to have a new display for Cobra because you can see that my shelves are filling up now and... Uh, Yes, I've been buying a lot of Joe, and I've also had some very good fortune uh, with uh, with <laughs> getting good deals and great and great knowing great people. Uh, so, yeah, and I'm very passionate about getting this collection even better than what I had as a kid. Because as a kid, I had no money, but now as a retiree, I got that budget. I can get them right. So, uh, but yeah, and there's those O rings that uh, I was also sent in Tiger. But the other conversion that I've been dancing around is this one. And you see my Cobras outside this? I picked this up at Valley Village today. This thing, I am going to turn into a Cobra Siege Crawler of some type. It is awesome. And that fits a fig in there, right? Uh, not a big fig. So I had to go with my Marvel Legends Yelena uh, coil bike guy, check, sorry. Uh, but it fits beautifully in there. I can put some details in there, but 
you know, next week I'm going to start priming that thing up and uh, I am already breaking out the sketchbook to see how that's going to go. And uh, I just wanted to show that one because I know we got some custom guys out there and I'm curious, guys, do you have any idea what that thing is? Because I just got it for 10 bucks Canadian. Uh, it's automated so the legs move around and forward and I haven't tested it the other buttons because I think there's got to be some programming involved in that and I don't care about that, but I'm going to try and access the lights. Uh, but I have no idea what line that's from, what toy that is. Uh, nonetheless, it's now going to be a Cobra Siege Crawler. And uh, you can see my Cobra Occupation Forces are getting ready. And I think I'm going to do a couple of custom characters for uh, augmenting that by maybe hopefully getting some Python Patrols on sale at some point or, or just buying one and making a custom character. But that's definitely on the list so you got the hovercraft you got that you got the, the display figures i got a lot to do guys and that's basically what i'm going to be showing through at the show a little bit every now and then uh on top of the figure reviews and just some fun joe talk so uh lastly yeah like share subscribe uh comment uh, feel free to, you know, repost other places, whatever. I always leave that to the end. It, like, shows how much I actually care about that and why my channel grows so slow, maybe. But uh, I know you guys are good sorts. You'll do that when you feel like it. Uh, and don't forget about that 200 contest. We're, we're getting closer. We're going to, as, as soon as we get to the 200, I'll put up a post about the, the rules of the contest, how to win it, and uh, give you a timeline to answer into it. And then we'll just take it from there. Somebody's going to win uh classified cobra officer number 97 this one here uh we're gonna be giving that away on the 200 subscriber contest all right so that's it for uh the yeah alley viper uh that's the old alley viper but the alley viper review uh and uh we will catch you guys next time when i finish up some stuff and i have something new to show you all right take care bye